Hello and welcome to Checking In, a Lodging DEI Chat. I am your studio host, Oren Stewart. We have another great show in store for you today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Once again, thank you for joining us here at Checking In. I am Oren Stewart, your studio host. Now let's introduce our hosts, Miranda Kitterland Lynch and Leon Thomas. Hi. How are you both? Doing well, Oren. Good to see you. Miranda, how you doing? You well. I'm great. Good, Good to see you as well. Yeah, here we are. You know, I, I usually ask you before we start right at this point in the show, I say, hey, Miranda, here we are, episode... And I never remember what number it is. <laughs> well, see, and, and, and you know, I sense that and I'm like, I'm not trying to throw a curveball at her. It's because I truly don't know either. <laughs> so I did an official count this morning at like 5.30 a.m. Okay. Now, I know most people are exercising okay. or sleeping or preparing for work or whatever. You know, in my case, usually at 530, I'm playing racquetball, you know, because okay. that, that's my thing. Right. Instead, I'm sitting here counting the episodes. One, two, three, four. So and I figured out with that magic, you know, the number that comes after 10 is 11. This is our 11th episode. Yes. Number 11. I love it. I yeah. would have never guessed. I have no idea what we're on because I'm just having so much fun enjoying these conversations. Yes. Yes. It is. a It is a great time. It's. I'm still getting great feedback from friends and even got an email from someone that I don't know. Well, I know him now, but then they said, <laughs> I really, I like the show. And they wanted to know how they could be a guest on the show. And I said, well, you kind of just did. You send me an email, you send an email <laughs> to Miranda. So if you email me, it's leonthetrainer at gmail.com. Miranda, how do folks get in touch with you? You can definitely email me, M-K-I-T-T-E-R-L at F-I-U or you can just Google me, Miranda Kitterlin Lynch, the only one. You know, that's my favorite line. Right? <laughs> the only one, right? on. So so today, as we continue our conversations into, into hotel and hospitality diversity, we have someone I've been looking forward to talking with. He and I have communicated several times through LinkedIn and other means, but now is the first time we're actually eyeball to eyeball. I'm looking forward to having a conversation with Mr. Calvin Stovall. Calvin, let's bring Calvin on. And Calvin, how you how doing? You doing? Hey, hey, what's going on, Leon and Miranda? How are you both? Good, good. Yeah, yeah everything is right on groovy. Yeah, Perfect. looking. Thanks for being with us. Hey, man, I'm excited to be here. Right, this pre pre Thanksgiving holiday week, right? Right, right. Uh, so, so truly grateful to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. So listen, let's talk about that pre-pre-Thanksgiving. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Uh, all of it. <laughs> all of it. I'll, okay, I'll give you a favorite. I'm a macaroni and cheese dude. Um, yeah, so I love the, not the fake kind. I got to be got to be baked in the oven, that whole thing with this. So I love, I love macaroni and cheese. Do you know what's funny? Um, so we're having Thanksgiving at a friend's house. None of us are um, able to travel for family. So we're all getting together. And guess what I was assigned to bring to Thanksgiving? Macaroni and cheese. The baked macaroni and cheese. There you go. And she called me and she said, do not come over here with something out of a box. I swear, <laughs> you better get this right. <laughs> Because you know you'll get you'll get you'll get in trouble if you come in there with that kind of macaroni and cheese. Yes, yes. yes. So I've got my recipe, I've got my plan, got I've got my practice run. <laughs> All right, there you go, Miranda. That's good. That's good. And listen, on another show that that my team produces this morning, we had a doctor on. We were talking about Thanksgiving calories and all of that. Oh, okay. And he goes like this. He said, go on and eat. Don't worry, but take your mask off and throw down. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Calories don't count on Thanksgiving. I know they don't count at the airport. So <laughs> right there you, there you go. Yeah. Right on. So Calvin, again, thanks for being with us. Let's jump into our, our conversation about hospitality. I'm gonna give you a little brief intro that I know about you and things that you, we've you shared with me. 
and then we'll go ahead and, and start talking about some things. So you're what some would call a hospitality success story, right? You started as a line level employee and made your way all the way up to a what was a vice president position of marketing with Homewood Suites, right? Yes, yes, sir. You're absolutely man, correct. How cool is that? Yeah, it was a blessing, man. It was a blessing. You know, I, I I'm originally from Chicago. I, I it's almost like it was yesterday. I've been in the hotel industry for probably most of my probably most of my career, probably 25, 30 years or so. Um, so, but yeah, I started as a desk clerk at a Holiday Inn City Center. I remember on Ohio Street, downtown Chicago, like it was yesterday, man. Um, but but worked in some various roles in hotel. I've been a front desk manager. I've been an AGM at an Embassy Suites in Memphis, Tennessee, um, and um, ended up working in the corporate office doing some consumer research there. Um, back in the old days, this was before Hilton. It was Promise Companies at the time. Um, so, you know, they got bought by Hilton. And so I've been through that whole transition and and became vice president of brand marketing for Homewood. I was with Homewood where they only had 35 hotels. Uh, oh, right. Played an integral role with some wonderful people that I worked with. Um, I had a wonderful leader um, as well. And we really grew that brand. Um, I don't know how many Homewoods they have now, which I'm sure is probably up to four or five hundred at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but, but just really did a lot of groundwork, excited. Um, the brand, we were just really excited to help grow that brand. We knew we had a great product, great people. Um, so as you can see, Homewood's been been doing really well in the market. Yeah. 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 That's fantastic. And how did you get started in the hotel business? Uh, <laughs> or do you even remember? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was eons ago. Um, I got started. I remember actually I went to a I went to a vocational school in Chicago. Uh, it was Dunbar Vocational. And um Actually, I was going to be, an, I wanted to be an architect, actually. I was majored in drafting and ended up working for an engineering company, um, doing drafting and delivering plans and things like that. And it just, it just wasn't a good fit. And a friend of mine, I think this was when the boom of the hospitality industry was happening, it was 80s or something like that. And and um, a friend of mine was like, dude, you have the personality for, man, you should, his, I think his sister had gotten into hotels and, and I ended up. Uh, going to a night school called Echoes Hotel School and met this wonderful lady um, named Karen Sock. And Karen was actually one of the instructors um, during the class. And, and what happened was she was also a general manager at that Holiday Inn. And she said, I want you to come and work for me. And the rest is history. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's funny how many people I talk to that are in hospitality that never plan to be there. And then right. it's yeah. all in <laughs> yeah. it, it was great. I mean, I love people um, and, and really love serving and, and helping people have great experiences like that. So it was a natural for me, um, but just truly had a great career. I mean, like I said before, God's just been good to me. Can't complain. I love it. You know, it doesn't really help you to complain. It doesn't. Do no, it doesn't. I've been <laughs> trying all day. <laughs> Absolutely right. You know, people are like, hey, let me tell you my story. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, so, right. Um, obviously on our show, we talk about diversity, equity and inclusion. And one of the questions that Leon and I have asked guests previously that are in industry in your career, how many general managers have you had that were people of color? General managers, people of color. Let me think. Embassy. Well, the one, my first one was Karen. Okay. And um, you know, she she was the one and only, actually. I was gonna mm -hmm. say, if you say more than one, it's gonna <laughs> blow my mind. Right. She was, she was the one and uh, one and only. And um, she was and she moved on. I mean, she was she was fantastic um at what she did. And I think she went on to become she went to Harris Casino. So she wasn't, she was there long enough to, you know, for me to get to know her well, but she was gone. And then after that, I haven't had any more. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, that fits right in with other guests that we've had. How mm -hmm. many black general managers have you had? And I think you, the one is the highest number, right? Wow. One, one wow. is the number. And, wow. and you know, you, you think one of the things that our industry is going through now is we're trying to find more black leaders, but it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult for college students, those that are that are coming directly into the industry to, to, to have them think and see that I can make it because here's yeah. someone else who's done it. 
Yes. You know, we all like to see that that person that that's done it. And so I think our industry has started to talk about it, particularly two years ago after the murder of, of George Floyd. Everyone made mm -hmm. these public statements. We're yes. going to do this. We're going to do that. The talk has gone away. But Calvin, maybe am I missing something? Is there are there some really cool things going on out there that we should know about? Well, well, I agree with you 100 percent. I I feel like, you know, may he rest in peace, the, the George, you know, him being murdered. I do believe that it did. People seeing that happen. I mean, we changed people's perspective on a lot of things. Um, and, and I, you know, and you're right. I think a lot of people were like, you know, particularly in the hotel industry, we want to create these programs. It was across the board. I'm not going to just say hospitality. Everyone was really, you know, trying to create programs, putting programs together, saying we were going to be more diverse, more sensitive and things of that nature. And I, I just believe that some organizations that went into that um, were authentic in it. And I, I'm, I'm believing that some some organizations may have started to make some really good strides in doing it, um, but I think a lot of people were checking the box, um, and you know, just until the wave of interest dies down, it, I believe if if we don't continue to push, particularly in this industry, for us to make sure that we have been diverse and being you know equitable and things of that nature we can't stop doing that because it'll people will go back to what they're used to back into the comfort zone we'll be back here again talking the same conversation 10 years from now mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely leon i hate to steal your thunder but um before the show he was mentioning that you were writing a book yes yes i am I about that. yeah this is it's called hospitality historiography it it actually started when I was in graduate school, um, I was part of an organization called the National Society of Minorities in Hospitality. I think it was hoteliers at the time. And they asked me to, um, they were having a conference, their first conference, uh, and um, Evan Frazier, who was, I think he was a chairperson on that, on that committee, he asked me to put together some research on Black hotel ownership. Um, so, I put together a monograph. It was my graduate monograph. It was probably about a hundred pages. And I went and did some research. I was, I was looking at stuff on microfish. Uh, for those of you that don't know who wow. microfish is, <laughs> <laughs> because I had, I went back that far, um, you know, to find, and it's, it's hard to find that information. Um, so, so I had the, the monograph and then I was not, now fast forward all the way till maybe like a couple of, maybe a year or so ago, I, I pulled the monograph out and I happened to be here with a friend and, and, and she asked me, she was like, what, what is that that you have? And I said, it's a monograph. Um, it's, it's called Hospitality Historiography. It's about hotel ownership, like from the 1700s. And she was just like, what? We had hotels? And so she said, let me see that. And she started reading it and she was like, oh my God, this is just interesting she's like did you think about writing making this into a, like a real book there it is that's yeah. amazing yeah. yeah so 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 i'm i'm i have probably up to maybe 90 stories now um wow. yeah it's it's a very you know i was hoping to be done with this probably six months ago <laughs> but <laughs> but i keep finding you know and once you find a, a a story it's like i can't delete it you know i want to make sure it's very comprehensive and and i'm doing justice to the person that i'm writing about yeah uh, so you know it, it's just taking a little bit longer than i anticipated but that's okay yeah. i just want to be proud of the work that i put out and mm -hmm. so i'm still i'm still um targeting next late spring it may be summer we'll see what happens but i'm gonna get it done yeah that's incredible i can't wait to read it yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited. It's 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 just been inspiring to me, um, you know, to see how brave these people were. And what I also, you know, what's really been cool about this book is that there were a lot of women too. Yep. <laughs> you know, and, and 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 there were cases that you know where the husband maybe passed away, and the and the his his wife would take over the hotel and keep it going, or and things wow. like that. And all of the women that were behind, you know, behind, you know, you hear about the Green Book. There were a lot of women that supported that publication, too. Right. Um, so it's I could just write another book 
just on women. Yeah. Uh, you know, There's your next project. <laughs> I was like, there you go. But but it's just been so inspiring, Miranda uh, and Leon, to 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 do it. Um, I, and I think probably a lot of people, most of these people, are the people have never heard of before. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll just be an eye opener. And if there's yeah. no excuse, if they can open hotels back then, yes, Jim Crow, mm -hmm. all of this stuff that they were dealing with right now, you have no excuse. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, National Society for Minorities and Hospitality is an incredible organization. I had the honor of being a faculty advisor for many years. Oh, wonderful. Yes, so wow. I'm very familiar with the organization and oh, the, wow. the conference. Yes, I'm a huge supporter. And um, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Evan uh, back in September, I think it was. We both serve on the Alliance for Hospitality, Equity, and Diversity um, oh. initiative. So You see that connection right there, Leon? Did you there see that happen right there? I, I didn't see it happen, but I, I knew it was all in there some kind of way. I knew that. <laughs> that was wonderful. Yes. Um, yeah, because, you know, that, that's, that started at Cornell. I was at graduate school yeah. at Cornell. And um, so that's where I met Evan. And I mean, we still we still very connected. Love awesome. that brother. We're going to have to get him on the podcast. I'm going to add him to the list. It's a there long you list, though. List. <laughs> long list. But, but you know, it's a hot show, right? right. <laughs> exactly. Right. We'll, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll get him on. Yeah. Folks, you're watching Checking In, a lodging DEI chat. I'm Leon Thomas with our co-host, Miranda Kidillan Lynch. Our guest today is Calvin Stovall, an industry vet. We've talked about his rise in the hospitality business. We've talked some about his book. And when we come back from our short break, we're going to talk some about what Calvin's doing now and ask him what advice he would have for anyone that wants to enter the hospitality business. Again, I'm Leon Thomas. You're watching Checking In, a lodging DEI chat. Produced by the Leon Thomas Group. One of the things that we do is great voiceovers and videos. Let's take a look at some of our work now. Renting is everything. It's style at your doorstep. Off the runway and into your closet. It's every trend you've been dying to try. And every designer you've yet to discover. It's wearing it your way every time and making it count everywhere you go. It's never worrying about what to wear because something new is always coming your way. That's why renting is everything. New styles, top designers, all for a flat monthly fee. Start your subscription at renttherunway.com. Slow roasted over hickory fire and pulled by hand. This is the way pit pork has always been done. Pulled pork lovers, rejoice. The smoky old days are back at the Smoke Shack. Water, it's everywhere. We drink it, we bathe with it, we cook with it. Coffee's made with water. Toilets won't flush without it. It's used for washing clothes, dishes, utensils, pots, pans, floors, and our teeth. Plants and crops need water, animals drink it, and fish need it too. And don't forget, we can have a lot of fun in the water. Water. What will we do without it? From the creative team that brought you The Browning Project and Dead by Morning comes a new thriller that will change the way you look at white-collar crime forever. Falling from the sky. Here we are back again and checking in a lodging DEI chat. Leon Thomas with Miranda Kitterland Lynch. And our guest today is Calvin Stovall. Those videos that you saw, that female voice was that of Kelly Johnson, who's working in production today on this broadcast. 
and that was Dion Hunter, the other voice. Calvin, thanks for being with us. Let me let me ask you this. So since you've left the hotel business, let's see. Now you were officially in the business, what thirty five years? Is that what you told me? Thirty thirty five. The hotel years, industry like itself. Yes. Um, yes. Counting when I started, yeah, probably about thirty years. I would okay. say. You know, I still, as a speaker now, I still mm -hmm. say I'm in the hospitality industry. I'm yeah. still serving. Sure. So um, I would say, yeah, about 30 years, actually. Yeah, 30 years. And as you and I were talking before the show, every business needs good service. Absolutely. Right? And that's part of what you do now with iconic presentations. Tell us about that. Well, I, you know, basically what I did is take my, took my expertise on the road. Um, <laughs> I have a, I have just a huge passion for inspiring people, um, helping people reach their, reach their full potential. Um, so of course, being in the hospitality industry that long, you know, I've had some built some great relationships with people who supported me uh, when I went out on my own. Um, so I, I do keynotes um, for, for conferences, meetings, um, you know, small and large um, and for hospitality industry and other custom, you know, other kind of other industries as well, associations and so forth. Um, as you mentioned, everybody has customers. So customer experience, customer service, leadership, all of those things can go across any industry. So I've been doing that for since 2005. And I'll also do training workshops. Um, I also do emotional intelligence um, workshops as well. So I'm a, I'm a big EQ fan. Um, I just think that's so critical today in leadership. And so that's 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 me in a nutshell. But I, I love doing that, man, getting people all fired up having them get excited again about an industry, you know, yeah. that they may have, you know, um, yeah. And particularly after the pandemic, you know, people were really struggling. So I love coming in and seeing people re-inspiring them again, re-engaging people. And it's just a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Incredible. Yeah. I teach a graduate course on organizational behavior. And one of our topics, of course, is emotional intelligence. Good. So I may be sliding into your messages with a little guest speaker. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, tomorrow I'm doing a, a virtual session for um, uh, for an organization, McNeil Hotel Company. Um, so, you know, I did a keynote for them in June. And so and then an EQ workshop and they want me to come back and do something virtual to talk, you know, just some reminders going into 2023 mm -hmm. and the importance of EQ and, and some other stuff to get them get them fired up to go into the next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and so you're in Charlotte. I actually lived in Charlotte for about a year and a half. Well, outside of Charlotte in the sleepy little sub suburbs. Um, and where, where, where were you, Miranda? Because I'm actually in Mooresville. Okay. I was in Waxhaw. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Um, so, and I saw on your Iconic Presentations website that you're a big fan of storytelling. Yes. Uh, I, I too believe in storytelling as a way to learn and to to teach and coach. So um, that combined with music, what's your favorite type of music? Uh, I love all pretty much pretty much all music, but I am a I am a one of those old school music guys. Um, I love soul music, so awesome. you know Al Green and Luther, those guys. But I do also I have a twelve and a fifteen year old, so I'm also this out here a little baby or. <laughs> You know those guys too. So I'm across the spectrum, but I am an old school fan. I love an old hip hop head, LL, all those guys. I still love them. Wu Tang Clan, Tribe. I'm into all that stuff. So it it spectrums, and when I'm chilling, a little jazz. So I go go across. I'm not into heavy metal. Nothing against the heavy metal heads, uh -huh. you know, but that's just not my thing. But um, you know, so I, I I just I've loved music all my life. It was it was common for me to wake up on Saturday mornings with Smokey or Diana Ross on Saturday morning. My mom, my dad loved music. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's just okay. in me. So I use it in my keynotes too. I talk about it, use it, doing chants, all of it, you name it, it's in there. I love it, <laughs> yeah. I love it. It must be so dynamic. Yeah. Um, I have two girls and uh, they're about that same age of, in uh, distance, two years apart, but mine are four and six. So tell oh. me, does it get any better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. They become they become more self sufficient, which is good. I you just know? hope that they get there before they kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> My boys, they, you know, they actually they they they're four years apart and I mean, two years apart. They get they get along really well. Um, you know, no. they just eat everything. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Now see, but y'all, y'all, y'all should have called me. I'd have given you some instructions. Oh, okay, okay. You can't oh. have them that far, that close together. <laughs> Mine are thirteen years apart. Oh, wow. Thirty-eight wow. and twenty-five. So, wow. when the baby was born, I almost had kind of like a built-in babysitter. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Now there's some positives to that, but then yeah. again. Yeah, I, you yeah. don't want to go through all of that stuff again, you know. <laughs> right. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, hey, look, it does, it does, but they're a joy, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. They are, they are, they are a joy. Um, they make me laugh, and you can have a bit hard day, and they'll they'll say something absolutely bananas, and you just crack up laughing, and I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So while you're jamming to little baby, I'm jamming to baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, not baby shark. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, you know, with, with my boys, I try to, what's really interesting though, is that, you know, they'll hear a song from their generation, but it's always a sample of something I know from back in the day. And I'll say, son, no, that's not original. Let me let you listen. But they don't even care about the old one. They're like, ah, oh, dad, whatever. whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Calvin, you, your children, would you want them to go into the hospitality business? And let me let me tell you one one motivation for asking that question. My oldest son is in the restaurant business, hmm. and hmm. I tried to convince him he didn't want to do that. Um, he had scholarship offers to go to schools for architecture and engineering. And I thought that was the best move for him. And when I was traveling, he called me and said, dad, I've made a decision about school. I said, great. Where are you going? Florida, Penn State, Virginia Tech, Maryland, which one? And he says, Johnson and Wales. And I said, no, 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 no. You are not going in. The, no, for what are you going to study? He says, restaurant management like no that ain't happening really really and he's he's still doing it he's doing great loves what he does having wow. a, a lot of success i'm assuming he's making a bunch of money he never hits me up for a loan so i, I guess everything is okay what about your children would you want them to go into the business and kind of a second part what would you say to someone who wants to go into hospitality hospitality uh, an African American or maybe a female that wants to go in, what would you say? What well, advice ask, would you give? Let me answer the first the first question. Um, yes, uh, my 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 boys are very personable, uh, very um, cordial. They 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 love dialogue, having conversations with people. Um, so. I know if they did decide to go in the hospitality industry, they would do they would do very well in it because they just have that type. It's built in them um, to be, you know, to be like that. Um, I'm really the I'm a proponent, a huge proponent of doing what you're passionate about and, and everything else will come. Um, I would I would I would love for them to go in the hospitality industry just because of what I think it gives a person. You're able to really have that servitude, you know, that service attitude. Um, it's, it's, it's never boring. You, there's, and no, every day is different, all of, for the, the excitement of it all. Um, so yeah, I, I would support that if they wanted to. And I would say, hey, if that's what you're passionate about, go for it. Um, so I, I think, and to answer your, your, your second part of your question, I think the hospitality industry has a lot of work to do. Um, and I'm gonna say, particularly attracting the younger generation to the industry. Um, so I think we made a, a, a huge, the whole, when the pandemic happened, a lot of layoffs, all of the stuff, I don't want to rehash all of that. I think what happened was we lost a lot of great people, a lot of veterans in the industry, um, and they've gone, moved on. Um, so I think we, we, we have to get younger generations re-engaged in this industry. And I think we can do it through technology um, we, we can do some things, you know, to, to enhance the customer experience and things like that. I mean, they, they're used to technology, but I don't think the industry has become that tech savvy yet. I think we have a little bit to go to do that. And I think that's what will attract the younger generation. I think they're looking at something, they want something a little different. And I think we need to, to maybe consider that. 
I'm a big person on, on, on culture and things like, so what you're doing here with this show, with the eye, um, it, people want to belong to places that appreciate them and value them. They feel like they have a seat at the table. They're not being tolerated, but valued. All of that C culture is everything to me. And, and if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your guests and everything else will fall in place. But I think, you know, um, what I would tell a person coming into this, um, I would say, make sure it's something you're passionate about coming into. Make sure you really want to do it and, and find a mentor. Um, find somebody that has been in, preferably been in the trenches or whatever and has been successful. I'm not really interested in if, if you can find a, a African-American because I'm going to say if, you know, mentor, that's great. But if not, get somebody that that can help you navigate, you know, because I think that's going to just help you. And depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to go in corporate, because I didn't have that, you know, I, I just, you know, I was fortunate, you know, Jim Holthauser, who was my my vice president at the time, he understood and he was probably pretty rare at the time. Um, the importance of valuing employees and making sure you're getting sharing your opinions and, you know, and he helped me um, really come into, you know, that vice president role and all of that. And I would consider him a mentor and a supporter. Um, so you need allies like that, um, I think, in any career. And I think you need to have that in the hospitality industry. So that's what I would tell people. Mm -hmm. Find a mentor, be passionate about it, yeah. but try to find somebody that can help support you and, and, and look for the right culture, right? It's a biggie. It's yeah, a biggie. absolutely. That's all incredible advice. I can't wait to share that with my classes. Um, let me ask you uh, if I can, sorry, Leon, do I have time for one question or two? You're good. Two. Okay. two. Okay. So my first question would be, um, how do you feel that you were able to navigate without a mentor? Like, was it just trial and error, intuition? How, how do you feel that you were able to to navigate the, those moves because you've made some big moves. Yeah, a lot of prayer, <laughs> a lot of prayer. <laughs> but 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 as I said before, I think you know having somebody um, like Jim, um, you know, he, he was he was he was a white guy, but I think you know he but he truly cared about people and their growth and their development, and so he really was very deliberate. And everything he did. I mean, I took like assessments, like he was like, Calvin, I want to make sure you're positioned to be successful. And so he he really cared. And then I'm not, you know, and so along the way, I had all the way throughout my hospitality career, I had someone there to help me. Karen, the first one, and well, not that she wasn't the first one, actually, when I was even with the engineering company, there was a, a, a another African American woman named Gloria Cook. She was supportive and Karen was supportive and Jim was supportive. So I had I've had people that was that was deliberate in really helping me grow and develop. And then it was just up to me to walk through the door and accept it. Um, yeah. All the feedback, all of it didn't make didn't <laughs> didn't feel good mm -hmm. in some instances. But, you know, you got to look at all feedback as a gift. Right. Yes. And um, so I did that and, and I adjusted when I needed to. But I would always, what I loved about Jim and 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 Hilton was that I, I felt like I was always appreciated and I could be me. Mm. Mm. That's a big deal, a very big deal. I could be me. Mm. Yeah. And that was, you know, and particularly when I'm talking about, I'm talking particularly about the Homewood piece, because that was that was a special part of my career. Um and and really, really was which really formulated my love for the hospitality industry. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And you say it was a white guy. Well, right. Statistically, it's always going to be a white guy right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm yes. sure it's a white guy. Leon, I think you're <laughs> Yeah, I had three I white guys. <laughs> I wanted to make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but even today, even still today, what is it, 2%? Is it like 2%? Of GMs mm -hmm. are African American. Is it? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yeah. That's unacceptable. Yeah, right. that's and why I'm, we're on here every week yelling. <laughs> yes, and and the thing is, but see, the the onus is on the people that's doing the hiring. Mm -hmm. 
And so, and, and I believe like, but I, I do believe it comes from the top too, the CEO, all of the executives, everybody has to be aligned around this whole concept. We need to really truly work on this and don't just talk about it, be about it. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you can do so many plans. You can write out all this stuff if you want to. I don't want to hear the stuff about, well, we can't fire qualified people. Please, mm -hmm. please. Please, there. I can walk right out. I can call people for you if you want me to, and get mm -hmm. people that can do this job for you. So all of the excuses um, are just, you know, you, you just really don't want to do it. You just mm -hmm. want to yep. check the box. Right? And just to clarify to our listeners, I was not being salty about the white guys. We love no, our we, female allies. We yeah. love them. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I mean them. that's reality. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm on all allies of all colors. Right. Bring them on. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So my last question for you is one that I try to ask every guest, and that is, what would you go back in time and tell your 20 year old self? And you can only pick one thing. <laughs> wow. I'll go back and tell my 20 year old self. Mm. Mm. I don't know, man, that's a that's a toughie. That's a tough question. It's tough for me to pick one thing. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things I could, you know. Um, I I guess I would probably just say some of the relationships. I wish I wish I would maybe built on them a little more. Maybe um, I, I've ran I've run into a lot a lot of people along the way, and some of those people. I think I probably could have done a better job building a relationship with them. Now, I think, thank, thank God, now with social media, um, it has helped because mm -hmm. I've been able to reconnect with people. Um, but, you know, other than that, I, I'm the journey that I've taken and what I've done, um, I don't regret any of it at all. I have no regrets. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've done internships at Disney World. I mean, I've worked at, you know, at St. Jude, I've been, I've worked at, I mean, I've had a lot of varied opportunity and, re and met a lot of people along the way. But if I could, if, to go back, I was like, man, I wish I would have maybe forged a strong relationship with a couple of people. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm good, you know? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Leon? Yeah. Calvin, thank you so much for being our guest. Man, it's a great, great conversation, man. I'm glad we, we were able to, have this conversation and thank you so much for what you've done what you're doing what you've done and all the the great tips that you you've given today on relationship building follow your passion all of those things that you talked about thank you so much it's been a pleasure yeah, it's been a pleasure as well thank you so much for the opportunity um again um you know i just think you guys are doing great here great work just keep it up thank you. you know you know i think this is fantastic with platforms like this um you know, get the word out and you just may, you know, hope that the right people are listening and they're like, man, maybe I could do a better job at this. And right. so that's awesome. Congratulations yeah. to you guys too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to our studio host, Oren Stewart. Hey, Oren. Hello, you all. What an amazing show. Another great show. So glad that Calvin could join you all. Thanks again everyone for tuning in to Checking In, a Lodging DEI chat. I am your studio host, Oren Stewart. Stay tuned for many, many more great shows with many, many more great guests. Take care.